Welcome to the Automotive Blockchain channel, everyone. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, I wanted to go ahead and just say, uh, this is part two of the series I am calling Digital Identity. And this identity has to do with your vehicle as well as how that also pertains to you. All right, now this is part two. What did we cover in part one? In part one, we focused on how Accenture played a significant role, and this is in my opinion, on developing the standards and kind of investing in the technology having to do with digital identities. Now I know the idea of digital identities for some of you may be like, oh my gosh, someone's creeping all up in my stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much what it could be like, uh, but we're gonna focus on the reality and the benefits it's going to have in the future economy. And what I mean by future economy is going to be specifically in the fourth industrial revolution that is taking place, and once again, in my opinion, right now, and how standards are being set in this new economy. And what about those standards? That's what part two is all about. Part two is going to be about looking into some of the standards that are being created right now as it pertains to vehicle identity. But before we get into that, I just wanna say one thing. Let's pump the brakes in the Automotive Blockchain Channel bus, and let's say this. Hey, thank you all for joining a love dub goes out from my heart to yours. This channel wouldn't be what it is without you. So I do appreciate you on that. And let's kick this thing off. The bus is rolling out. So who is Moby? I know, who is Moby? Some of you who may not know who Moby is, Mo Moby is the Mobility Open Blockchain Initiative, all right? And with what Moby is about, um, the, the Moby Initiative, they have developed a series of white papers as it pertains to uh, vehicle identity. And this one here is, as you can see on the screen, Blockchain for Vehicle Identity. It is a business white paper. Now I am not gonna go through and read this entire white paper. There'll be a link in the description down below. You can figure out how you wanna download it. But I highly recommend, if you have thoughts in your head about, hey, how is this really gonna play out in the automotive industry? How long is it gonna take? Is there really any type of investment that I could put into this uh, future industry so that I would be able to fare off? Now, first off, hey, look, this is not investment advice. This is me doing research and saying, hey, you know what, I do this research so I can figure out where I need to or I desire to invest my money in. And I'm telling you right now, there are things that have to do with, as I personally believe, that layer in how V-Chain technologies, how Ocean Protocol technology, and now a number of other, like IOTA Foundation, how IOTA, I should say, um, are, are diving in and you can see their technologies being woven in to what this white paper talks about. It is truly amazing. So let's go ahead and dig into this a little bit and let's touch on the high bullet points. And what are those going to be? Well, first, first of all, first of all, check this out. Look at this working group team members. Just take your eyes for a moment and just scan down the names of the companies. When you look at BMW, Accenture, IBM, Route One, an AI company. Um, there's another one with respects to GM. You have Toyota Financial Services. You have Bosch, Cognizant. Again, with Accenture. Look how many times Accenture is just plastered all down in here with the working group team members for this vehicle ID. All right. Now, in this, you, as you can see, there are stakeholders in this from all around the world. And so if your thought is, you know, how big is this thing? You know, I'm just trying to figure out what blockchain is. And now I'm looking at this automotive site uh, and it is huge, folks. OK, it is just simply huge. And the co-chairs of this are Ford and Group Renault. All right. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Now, their focus on this, folks, is really realistically is this. OK, yeah, there's an executive summary. I'm not going to get so much into that. I'm just going to say this is that when you look at their focus, the blockchain and the distributed ledger technology, when you combine that with the artificial intelligence, that is AI and the two way vehicle to anything that's vehicle to X, V to X kind of connections that are happening and that they're building up through 5G and you start thinking about how that's gonna layer into the mobility industry and your vehicle, it literally is going to be a trillion dollar industry, okay? And when you look at that in particular, I want you to keep something in mind as it reads right here on the screen in this middle highlighted section. This is literally, keep in mind, your vehicle is basically a big thing. 
and it is becoming more and more and more sophisticated and becoming an internet of thing, connectivity to the entire grid system. That's what they are talking about. Mobi's vehicle identity creates a vehicle's digital twin. I just mentioned digital twin in the last video, and they're talking about VID's digital twin, enabling efficiencies and economies in the digital world to be ported to the world of physical mobility. So digital mobility to physical mobility. That's what they're focused on, all right? Now let's get into the crux of this. This is the new economy, folks. This is the economy of movement, as they are calling it. A multi-trillion dollar digital transaction ecosystem of vehicles. That's what this is. Vehicles, infrastructure, mobility, and mobility prosumers. Who are prosumers? They made that up. It's been around for a while, so they make it up. But they're individuals who are both consumers and producers in mobility data services. And as I said at the beginning of this, what is the digital twin? The digital twin is also going to be your vehicle, but it's also going to be you, a digital identity of you as well as associated with the digital identity of your digital assets. I'm telling you, if you haven't fi figured that out, I'm going to repeat it. A digital identity and a digital twin is going to be a representation, a digital representation of you in the digital environment and all of your digital assets in their digital environment. And they're going to marry them together and see how they play out in the physical world. That's what's going to be happening. And this is just focusing on the vehicle side of it and the connectivity side of it. Now, there are some interesting things in here um, that, that go down with this, all right? So flipping down, one of the things we wanna focus on is what is the birth certificate? Now, as you know, your birth certificate is a, is a secret thing. You don't just give that out. And here in the United States, you have that birth certificate and when you get employed somewhere or you need to go somewhere, you have to submit your birth certificate, oftentimes with another ID. <laughs> and there's a joke in there for those people who are trying to figure out, hey, I don't want to have my ID, my ID to do X. There's this big voting thing going on here, but I digress. But you're going to need your birth certificate or some other form of ID in order to utilize in this new world economy. That says it right here, all right? So now keep this in mind. That vehicle birth certificate is the same thing. It is literally born when the vehicle is manufactured. And as it reads, the vehicle's birth certificate encompasses information relevant to a vehicle's value and capabilities when it leaves the assembly lines. So as soon as that sucker gets off the assembly lines, gets on the big fat boat, and which is a transaction, Keep in mind, the shipping line is a different transaction. So let's go ahead and fast forward into some of that in just a second here. So there's a whole bunch of steps in that, all right? And I want us to focus on that. But before we do, if you just need a quick visual on what exactly this Mobi ID, this mobile vehicle ID is all about, take a look at this image. So you can see here that the Mobi VID includes the, a digital wallet. It's going to include anything that is on the maintenance records and recall records. It includes the connectivity in the data marketplace. Yes, a data marketplace. Uh, on and on and on. Take a look at that image. That's what it's going to be including. Now in that, however, you know, we, we look at this. I mentioned the shipping of the vehicle. All right. Feast your eyes on this. Asset visibility is crucial while transporting and storing vehicles. So remember, I just started talking about when that vehicle leaves the assembly line with that vehicle birth certificate, that vehicle birth certificate and that VID, and it gets on that shipping lane, a lot of things can happen by the time it gets on the, on the, uh, on the boat, gets off the boat, gets to another port, gets to the franchise dealership, was it a different owner of the vehicle itself? A lot of things happen. So it says shipping a vehicle from a factory to a dealership can take weeks even months depending on the origin and the dis destination and efficient tracking and tracing of a vehicle custody can reduce administrative overhead to me folks hey blockchain automotive blockchain bus I'm, 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 I'm coming on the AP system right now, the PA system right now. Guess what? To me, this is screaming what VeChain does. It screams what VeChain does. And for those of you that don't know who VeChain is, go look it up. I, you know, I won't do it in this video, but it is screaming the types of thing that VeChain does. All right. They're tracing the vehicle. They're putting things in a VID. Um, I, I just love it. So they're calling it VID. They're calling it, anyway, I don't want, it, it's just, it screams too much of that. And if you look at some of the original partners for the uh, Mobi, uh, Mobi, VeChain was listed to that. You know who else was? Ocean Protocol. Ocean Protocol was also listed on there. And if you look down here, uh, down this next highlighted section, you see Mobi VID will allow stakeholders to participate in 
shared ledger of a vehicle information. What is Ocean Protocol doing? They were talking about how they could share a common ledger where you could protect your own proprietary information, but share the most important parts. <laughs> Come on, folks. This is just, it's, it's an amazing thing. All right, enabling automated contracting, execution and settlement across business ecosystem. So that means from the boat to the port, to the uh, to the franchise dealership, at least like here in the United States, and to you, the consumer that's out there, uh, you the one that's driving the car. That vehicle birth certificate is going to transcend transcend all that. But what about the the pre-owned side of it all? What about if you purchased a used car? Take a look at this. All right. So the, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, as we like to call it here in the United States, says that more than 450,000 vehicles are sold each year with false odometers. The vehicle ID is gonna help protect against that. And that's right, yes, that's right. You, out there, you, driving that new pre-owned car, that new pre-owned car, hey, I ain't hating, I got one of those. Um, you know, you think you may have, uh, you bought it with a good, uh, less than 100,000 miles on it. Do you realize you might have a vehicle that has more than 100,000 miles on it because it was rolled on back and you don't even know it? Yes, that is a crime, it happens, and there's a lot of money lost in that. So that is there. And a matter of fact, even in Europe, as it reads down here, the European Parliament says that blockchain is identified as uh, as being a highlighted solution to help, again, uh, to help protect against odometer fraud. That is a big deal, saving lots of money. Remember when I uh, just mentioned the fact that this is a trillion dollar industry? Well, this is gonna be helping protect that part of the industry. Um, now let's focus on another thing. There are also parts and accessories associated with this, folks. Um, and so tracing of parts and accessories uh, along this value chain, uh, along the supply chain is going to be very, very important to me. That screams VeChain again. I'm not saying that VeChain is this and I'm not saying, hey, go ahead and invest in VeChain. I personally do invest in VeChain or, uh, or I should say the tokens, uh, but uh, you know, do your own research on that. Um, but that's going to be a, uh, taking a snapshot of what the vehicle actually has along with these birth certificates and where they're at in the, uh, in the distributed ledger uh, along its life cycle, that digital thread. Now let's get into something that I want to, uh, that I want to find to be of, of extreme interest. And yes, there are a number of different use cases in that. Go ahead, download the white paper and look into them. Autonomous Economic Agents. The combination of the Mobi VID, that's that birth certificate, which is a trusted location and the ability to accept and conduct payments will ultimately transform vehicles into autonomous economic agents. Say that again, okay? So the vehicle ID with a trusted location, trust and verify, and the ability to accept payments will ultimately transform vehicles into autonomous economic agents. So that vehicle you're driving now, or some of you have that easy pass or that sun pass or whatever it is where you're at, the vehicle will have its own wallet in there to pay for parking, to pay for p tolls, to pay for, you know, just literally the um, uh, the entering a different city. Because depending on what type of vehicle you have, you may have to pay a toll, uh, a green toll, a carbon toll in order to get into certain cities because you're driving a vehicle that has an ICE uh, related engine that's an internal combustion engine and you can't go into that particular city, aka some city in California, uh, without paying an additional toll because your vehicle is polluting the air and is not as green as the standards that their city would allow. So you'll, uh, so some of these vehicles will be able to have these sorts of uh, add-ons to it. So this is the vehicle to everything, folks. So that is one of the things that I wanted to mention here. This is the Automotive Blockchain Channel, and this is just part two of the vehicle I or so of the series I'm calling digital identity as it pertains to the vehicle and as it pertains to you. Let me know what you think. There's a lot more information that I'm going to be putting out uh, with respects to this. And uh, don't forget to put the comments in the comment section, all that great stuff. And I look forward to seeing you 